This is a turtle racer. Hey, tubers, welcome back for another adventure. And we're going to take another stab at this Rapticity 150. As you guys could see from the B-roll in the beginning, we did get it running, but boy, this thing was slow, turtle slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a PZ27 uh, swap on it. And I'm hoping that once it's breathing through a bigger carburetor, that the RPMs come up, the torque converter engages fully, right? Um, begins to spin to its higher dynamic diameter, which will allow this thing to go a lot faster. Let's get started. So, if you guys recall, I just replaced the carburetor that's on there. And I mean, <laughs> it's breathing through a, um, a hole that I can't even get my... Uh, my index finger into so it already came with this manifold on it looks like I have plenty of space place plenty of space to smash a PZ27 onto so that won't be an issue the cable might be a little short I'm also going to check out the gasket surface here if there's no gasket that would also explain some of its running characteristics, right? Because it's got a second vacuum leak. I fixed this one, but I didn't fix that one. So I took it apart, and you guys could see I replaced the gasket down there, which, by the way, <laughs> was kind of difficult, you know, when you got to break a razor blade in half to, uh, to make gasket changes. That's a bit of a fight. Here's the difference between the PZ27 and the PZ, I think it's at 20, right? You guys could see. You can almost put your hand through this one and you'd have trouble getting your pinky through that one. You can see the spacer slash gasket. You can see the cardboard one I put there and you guys could see I oiled this. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. The carb slide is installed and it closes all the way, which is good, but it doesn't doesn't open all the way. So um, luckily this cable has an adjuster on it and we could take up some of the play. Seems like a lot of stupid details, but once again, I don't want to smash this carburetor on there, throttle her up, not have her wind up and go, oh man, I got something else going on. So the carburetor smashed on, right? We got the little bottle. I still have to put gas in it. I got the jump pack on. So I'm going to set it, put gas in it, set up the camera, and uh, make sure we're all good. By the way, I checked the oil again, and it's still good. It doesn't hurt to check the oil too frequently. It sure does hurt if you don't check it frequently enough. I got my official starter solenoid bypass wrench here. I'm running it on a hacked up pit bike CDI system. Let's see what she wants to do. Let me just make sure it got gas to it. I just put it in. Spitting out the carburetor a little bit. You know what? Maybe it's a little better. It still basically has that problem. Let me go with a, I have a portable CDI made with a GY6 um, CDI box. Let me try that. Okay, I have it set up with the proper um, GY6 CDI, so the curve should be better and it should be happier. Um, I also turned up the idle a little bit, maybe too much, we'll see. Oh. Let's 
turn it on. Okay, seems to be running, seems to rev up better, but I wouldn't quite consider it perfect. I want to get it out for a ride. I think it's revving up more, which means the torque converter should be behaving better. Um, when we had those covers off, I wasn't thrilled with the appearance of the pulse generator and how close the pulse generator was to the flywheel and some of that. So. Depending on how it behaves, um, we might have to go do a little more electrical troubleshooting. Anyway, in the meantime, why don't I get this puppy out for a ride and we'll see how we're doing. You know what, before we take this out for a ride, I just want to check the valves. So, I loosened up all these 8 millimeters for the skull cap. There you are, it's off. And I... I think I found a problem. <laughs> you want the valves rappy tappy loose, but I don't think you want them quite this loose. So why don't we fix this? So the valves are adjusted the way I like them. Little rappy tappy exhaust intake. Now you guys know how you do it. You loosen the retainer, which is nine millimeters in this case. And if you want to loosen the valve while you hold the retainer, you spin the center out a little bit, you tighten. Um, if you want to tighten up the valve, you loosen the retainer, hold the outer nut, turn the top in a little bit, and then tighten. But I like them so they tap like this. Hopefully, now that that's adjusted, this thing will run like a champ. By the way, while it was in here, you know, I checked the timing chain to make sure that's all nice and tight, right? No bag or anything. So, just a matter of putting the cover on. I think we might actually get that rod I've been talking about. Okay, now let's see how she's feeling. So, choke. Starting wrench. On. A little, little tickle here. that's a lot better. All right, let me get some air in the tires, particularly that one's pretty flat. We'll get some more gas into that little bottle, and we'll go out for a rip, I think. I'm thinking she should fly. Okay, let's do a ride on this puppy.
lot faster. I think the torque converter is working okay. Some of you guys recommend um, putting uh, different weights on it and all that. It might be right for a new belt. Drop it on the trails. some final adjustments to get these things just right. I'm going downhill. I got something like brakes. <laughs> they might slow you down a little bit. I wouldn't say they stop you. Yeah, this thing, the, uh, the door converter doesn't seem to step in until about thousand or so and that could be a matter of it needing a belt god I gotta get back here and cut been having a uh, a lot of Saturday things you know weddings and housewarmings Stuff like that. You know, last year there was nothing. But then this year everybody wants to get back to their lives. So there's been a lot of scheduling, graduations. Yeah, this thing doesn't. Doesn't seem to have any trouble with uphills. Pulls, uh, pulls like a team of mules. I am sitting a little low on the saddle here. I would consider this more of a uh, off-road, not a uh, not a speed racer alternate vehicle, but definitely able to. Uh, the hills. We'll, uh, we'll give it a test on that hill in the front of the house. We'll stop right on the bottom of that.
better. It'll be a little easier to romp. How did I get this out of here? I guess. This has the uh, this has the PZ27 hack on it. Went into it reverse a little better. She's hot. She's a little thumpy on going into forward. But so am I. All right. You guys like it? I think it's pretty cool. The um, the valve adjustment was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, it wasn't making any sounds when it was running. I would figure it would clickety clack like no tomorrow, but uh, it really didn't. Even though it was that loose, just shows you gotta you gotta check all this junk, right? I mean, it was too loose. What happens if it was too tight, right? I could have smashed the valves up. So it, it really shows when you get an unknown all-terrain vehicle, you really, you really want to spend a few minutes with it or the surprise you have could be uh, quite expensive or it might make the all-terrain vehicle no longer viable. Not all the parts are out there, right? GY6 stuff is out. 200S stuff is out. 110 you know the china 110s all that stuff is out but um sometimes you get into some of this other stuff and it isn't particularly if you say the word polaris those parts are a little harder to lay one's hands on okay i really want really want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe please remember feet down heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now